welcome, welcome, welcome to all our viewers. I'm your host, Sia Temba Sogopo, and welcome to the AT Corpus TV podcast. We are now a podcast. We actually transitioning from TV to podcast. So please feel free to watch and follow our content all day, all the time, every week. So with us today, we have Dr. Vilma Newt. Did I pronounce that correctly? Nihaut. 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 Is that fine? I yes. Don't. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and I'm sensing like a bit of German in that. Is there like a German list? Well, yes, Dutch. 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 Nihaut is Dutch and then Drukhen is German. There we have it. There My we husband's have it. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we have it. Because I did have a sense of that. So, welcome to our podcast. Welcome. Thank and you. Thank now you. it's all our viewers, because they are watching. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Well, just, just informally, just tell us about yourself. Like, who is Dr. Newhout Drupin? Like, just informally, we know that you're a member of parliament. Just tell us about yourself. Like, who are you? Like, how did you become where you are today? Yes, right. So uh, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, I'm using South African Sign Language. And so the voice is not mine. It's my sign language interpreter, Trudy Tennyson's voice. Uh, right. So, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be here. Yes. Okay. So another thing that I know of you is that you are the only, keep in mind, guys, the only member of parliament and you're currently serving in the portfolio committee of correctional services and justice yes justice and correctional justice services, and yes. correctional services thank you for that yeah i'm the only member of parliament for south africa who is deaf but i'm second for africa we do have another deaf mp in uganda yeah. um alex that is i think the only two of us for africa so far yes, yes. more deaf you know what, that says that the space is quite limited. Like, there's only two in Africa. Like, mm -hmm. tell us about that. Like, how how is that? Like, that means that it's not necessarily, like, there's not enough opportunities for people, you know, that are deaf. So if there are only two in Africa, like, how has that been in your experience? Yes, so I think uh, if, especially deaf people, uh, find it difficult to participate in branches, yeah. uh, branch meetings, and uh, you know, being actively involved in politically in political parties. I think it makes it difficult for them to have their name on a list uh, for parliament here. So I think that is more difficult. But I do think that other African countries have other members with disabilities, so maybe they are more active or become disabled during their term. Of, of Parliament, yeah, but I think for the deaf, we need sign yeah. language interpreters with us all the time. Even in branch meetings, there are not um, sign language interpreters there, so we can't become actively involved. Um, I know of ANC members in branches, but their family members do the interpreting, mm. and uh, and it also depends on if the family member is available. So it does make it quite difficult for myself, uh, disabled people, South Africa. They used to be very active in the, um, as part of the ANC organization. Mm, mm. And they had people with disabilities who re they recommended to the ANC yeah. to have five members uh, in 1999. Um, before that, we only had one uh, member, the late, uh, uh, late member that was there. And uh, so when the 1999 elections came around, as said, people South Africa asked for five members and yeah. I, I became one of the five as wow. a deaf MP and, and a deaf woman obviously um, <coughs> because the Honourable Deputy Minister Henry Tabakopani Zulu was the other woman so yeah. it was the two of us who came and that's how I came so, and, yeah. Yeah. and I think the brilliance of it right you're a woman of colour you're South African you're a woman and you're representing people that are disadvantaged rather Yes. And yes. of course, you have like a few achievements up your sleeves. And <laughs> oh, can you list my achievements? <laughs> I know that you are actually um, not. You're not only an, an activist, but you have a few 
recognized achievements. I actually want you to tell us our audience about that because <laughs> because we all this is about you. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, um, for people and for young deaf youth that are out there, you know, that don't really know that they actually represented in such spaces at the same time, you know. So and if you can just. Because at the end of the day, you know, particularly young people, we want to be seen in spaces. And, and for us to be seen, we want to be recognized, we want to be represented. That's the most important thing. So, you know, if for a deaf young person out there, and we know that you've definitely paved the way, you know, so that's how it's a, please yeah. list your achievements. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Um, I will leave uh, what what South Africa as a country has achieved. I'll leave yeah. that for later. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, my last achievement, which well, there's two, yeah. which uh, I'm still myself. I'm very amazed at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is to receive an honorary doctorate from my uh, alumni university, uh, and I didn't expect that. Kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. Uh, they wanted to convert it on me, so I accepted it, so or confer it on me. Yeah. Um, so my children were able to witness that yes. you know, more than 10 years ago, in 2009. Yes. So I think that is that is a great one. But also, um, at the same university, I'm a member of the board, yes, yes. a board member, board of trustees of the University of Calidates, and they meet about three times a year. Wow. Um, so I can fly to Washington, D.C. for that. But I think without um, academic achievements, yeah. maybe it wouldn't have been possible. I studied at the same university. Uh, I studied social work. And I really wanted to go to that university because I was surrounded oh by deaf people there. Yeah. Surrounded by deaf people from all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, had to, I had a roommate from Singapore there, and an American roommate. And, you know, you meet so many people. different people of different countries. So that was yeah. wonderful. And I have that. I had that kind of opportunity. Supporting me to go, you know, to that university was a South African himself who yeah. studied there yeah. and still yeah. working at Galadet from KwaZulu Natal. So you know, I'm, I, I'm, you know, at that time, I'm glad he gave me the support as well. Uh, I did my BA social work there, and then I stay. I knew if I came back, I would never go back. <laughs> And, and become a homesick so yeah. much overseas. So I thought, you know, well, um, let's let's go ahead and do your masters there. So yeah. I, I'm glad I had the opportunity. I had a lot of scholarship offered. Um, so I finished my yeah. masters in social work there too. And during that time, I made more friends oh. as well. So yeah, <laughs> you know what? It it definitely does sound. You know, it's been a journey to get to where we are today in society, right? and particularly the struggle for deaf people. And recently, a few days ago, a few days ago, I'm really sure it excited me, you know, to, to oh, actually, yes. oh, yes. To, yes. To, yes. To, yes. To, exactly, you know, to actually just know that deaf, um, um, the signing of, um, of, 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 of sign language to be the 12th official language, official like, language. Tell us about that. Like, where did that start? Like, what? How are you feeling? Like, you know, with regards to that. Like, I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, like, too excited. You were think, super I think excited. I was still on cloud nine. <laughs> um, I never thought that it would have happened this soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I yeah. thought, oh, maybe many more years to yeah. come. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I thought. But I really wanted this to be signed by our current president. Yeah. Because. He was the chairperson of the drafters of the constitution as we know it today. So yeah. he was the chairperson at that time. Yeah. yeah. And when um, the deaf representatives, I'm not sure if it was the South African National Council for the Deaf, they changed their name to the Deaf Federation of South Africa, I'm not sure what they were called at that stage, yeah. came to ask for sign language to be put in the constitution. But it wasn't put as a South African sign language, it was put as sign language okay. to be promoted by cancer. Okay. Okay. So at that time, but over the years, deaf people, you know, wanted South African sign language to be equal 
to other the other eleven official languages makes sense. Yeah, to be recognized you know, as their language, their South African sign language. So I think it took long because we didn't really have an understanding of what makes a language official. What does yeah, it mean? Yeah, yeah. So we realized that we had to come before the Constitutional yeah, Review Committee. Yeah, yeah. And if so, the Federation of South Africa made submissions, and I think also we made submissions at the wrong time, maybe. You know, right at the end of the term of Parliament, it usually came, and that's this time round. I told them, come at the start of the term, yeah, the parliamentary yeah, yeah. term starts, because it takes time for the Constitutional Review submissions to be processed inside the Constitutional Review Committee. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, pushing, that was the push for it, and I'm yeah, happy yeah, when yeah. both, I was happy when both houses uh, took the recommendation to accept that South African Sign Language must become the 12th official language, and, you know, we yeah, thought that's the end yeah, of it, and it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't the end, it still had to go yeah. to the Justice Committee, Justice and Correctional Services Committee, yeah. and this committee, I didn't want to be there <laughs> in the beginning, but I think God planned my way that I have to sit in that committee because this bill came through this committee. So, um, but you know, understand the department still mm. had to get public um, submissions mm. for the mm. bill. That took long. Yeah. It came to Parliament, and Parliament had to do public hearings. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, and then Devs I kept on messaging people saying, just say one sentence to say that you support something. Ah, exactly. to the committee. <laughs> And I think, you know, from there we took it, it got official. Um, but, you know, we thought the president is going to sign in September, yeah, yeah, Death yeah, Awareness yeah. Month. We thought that was going to be the case. All of us were in South Korea, the yeah. leaders were in South Korea, and we heard next week's the signing. <laughs> we better be here and witness the signing. So we flew, luckily we, we yeah. arrived on Sunday, and then Wednesday the president signed, and we flew all the way to Pretoria to see with this the signing and it was really uh, wonderful that the same president yeah. you know at that time he wasn't the president but the chair of that committee yeah who added it to the constitution was the one it, who it just added to a deep value official. to it yeah yes, and of right. course you celebrated right of course like <laughs> oh, yes, so we celebrated, but more celebrations to come. Yeah, we we, we did celebrate when Parliament passed yeah. the two thirds majority because we were like biting our nails. Are we going to get two thirds? Yeah, but we no, did. No. We did. So yeah. we celebrated. All nine provinces celebrated at a small celebration. Mm -hmm. But I think Devsa and the Deaf community must plan a, a proper. Big celebration. Yes. September is there for in this month. It's a milestone. It's a milestone, actually. It's a milestone. Yes, yes. Of course, a big milestone. Yeah. Big milestone. You know what? Um, you know, we were actually, you know, after uh, it was aired that um, you know, sign language was actually going to be signed as an official language, you know, um, as the 12th official language. So there were some, you know, um, the public, you know, they aired their views, but this is actually going to create opportunities, you know, yes. for the deaf community as well. And we know that um, we are very plagued by unemployment. And that's one thing, that's a sector that's actually going to be, you know, the opportunity that it's actually going to be created. So if yes. you can just please elaborate in terms of what more can we expect after the signing of, you know, of this, of, of sign language as the 12th um, official language. You know, what other opportunities, you know, can deaf, can the deaf community expect out there? Or what you actually just expect um, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a member? Yeah, right. Well, there's already been emails and messages, yeah. and, you know, maybe phone calls, I don't know, but for more sign language classes, yeah. where sign language classes takes place, people mm -hmm. mustn't think that I learn sign language in one week and I'm fluent. Mm. Must, mm. Please not, it's like any other language, you have to attend class, you have to go for practice, you yeah. have to sign. So I'm hoping that more of, of that would come up, more sign language classes, and we're hoping the deaf themselves can run those classes, yeah. those sign language classes and, and do the training. Yes. But we also hope that people won't think, oh, three years sign language mm. class is going to be too much. But it's a language. Language is a language. I mean, you have to go through grade R, grade one, right through to matric, learning your two languages. They have. So it's the same with sign language. You can't just have sign language in one week and say yeah, fluent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully people will persevere. 
you know, maybe take three year classes and to become sign language interpreters and we will have the need for more sign language interpreters because we want accessibility to be more, you know, more accessibility for, for example in hospitals and clinics, state hospitals, lawyers offices, universities. Yeah, yeah, must be you know available. Interpreters need to be available for true, true students to true, come true. to study, and and they also need higher education. I mean, apartheid has done a lot of damage for deaf people and the deaf youth. Our older deaf uh, people didn't have a proper education, so there we're hoping that more and more deaf people and deaf children can get a quality education and a higher education. You know, as my hearing children. Um, to have access to university and further studies and, yes. and to, to have, get better jobs. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know the, when, the, when the language was actually signed, and I think my excitement was that, okay, maybe this is going to be offered in the curriculum. It's going to be a language just like Spanish, German, an extra or an additional language that students will be able to actually choose. Um, yep. I'm thinking that, you know what, maybe, you know, even from from the level of grade, you know, grade one, you know, when students are actually choosing their language, so it can actually be added to the curriculum, you know. Yep. So um, I was, I think that was my thinking, and I'm like, okay, I'm excited, you know, and this is actually an opportunity, you know. So would it actually be going that direction as well? Because I think that's the most, if we have to push it and we've officialized it, we definitely have to, you know, push it into the curriculum as well. So, will it actually be going that direction as well? Yeah, well, I'm very glad to say that South African Sign Language is mentioned in the South African Schools Act since 1996. So, that is a requirement by law that deaf children must be taught through South African Sign Language. So the department um, already worked on a curriculum for deaf children specifically to take uh, South African Sign Language, SASL, I think from grade 10, 11 and 12. And we have deaf matriculants who has done the exams in South African Sign Language as a subject. So we have, we have that curriculum and has been planned. So we hope that that will filter down to the deaf schools from grade one and mm. then start spreading out to other schools with hearing children. Yes, because that's my interest because it should also be offered in hearing schools as well because yes. it's official. So everyone should have access to it, you know? Yes. And, yes. And, and also just to eliminate the stigmatization and to also just eliminate Perfect. the lack of communication, you know? So if I mm. come across as a hearing person, a deaf person, it should not be a matter of, ah, 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 I should be able to speak their language, you know? Yeah, that's so right, exactly. That's exactly, exactly the direction that and you know, the, in the long run, I think eventually we'll hope we get there. Yes, yeah. definitely. But we also want our deaf people and our deaf children to have the opportunity to teach. Yes. Overseas you will find universities that deaf people themselves are teaching yes. their language, you know, whether it be American Sign Language or whatever sign language yeah. in the country. Yeah. They are yeah. researching, they own the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it should be the same with us as well. Thank you so much. And, and you know what, Doc, before we wrap up, we do, we also engaging on like social media just to also just hear the views of the public. So we just generally also just want to ask members of the public if, what's their interest? Do they have a question to this particular, you know, bill that's been signed <coughs> into law? And what are their questions? I'm pretty sure they also share the very same excitement as you and I. So, um, do we have any questions from, you know, like our online, from our socials? Okay, there's one that says, um, I propose for, signing lang for, for sign language to be made a compulsory subject in school from grade one. We need to be able to communicate with the deaf. There we have it. Yeah. yeah. And that's from a hearing person, right? Already the interest mm -hmm. is there. You see, so the interest is there. So it, it, it basically says that people have been actually wanting this to happen, you know, because yes, yes. we have to eliminate the barriers, you know, to communication as well, That's by great. all means. Doc, thank you so much for having us on our, on our podcast. It's been a joy to have you. <laughs> it's been great. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.
stay tuned and don't forget oh. to watch. Thank you, Tom. Now, now I must teach you what Bruni taught the president. Please, please do. Remember, he taught the president to sign that thing. I'm going to teach you. Please. So that's thank you. you. Welcome. What? I support. I, I support. support. Sign language. Please teach me. Sign language. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And the president did it and now you did it. And then I did it. Thank you so much. Thank you.